Good morning everyone. Welcome to our morning inspiration. Monday, April 22, 2024. I hope you are in good spirit this morning and I pray as you go through today that you will allow God to be the center of your life. May you look to him for wisdom and for guidance and may you put your life in his hand and allow him to lead you. Our reading today comes to us from John chapter 12, reading from verses 1 to 11. And it says, Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. There they made him a supper, and Martha served, but Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anoint the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Then said one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him, why was not this ointment sold for three hundred pence and given to the poor? This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the bag and bear what was put therein. Then Jesus said, Let her alone against the day of my burying had she kept this. For the poor always ye have with you, but me ye have not always. Much people of the Jews, therefore, knew that he was there, and they came not for Jesus' sake only, but that they might see Lazarus also whom he had raised from the dead. But the chief priests consulted that they might put Lazarus to death because that by reason of him many of the jews went away and believe on jesus amen we give god thanks this morning for his words of wisdom and we pray that as we read that the holy spirit will give us clarity and understanding now this is a very interesting scenario or a very interesting story rather now just before the passover jesus was in bethany and bethany was where lazarus lived where mary and martha lived also and so jesus was having a meal with his friends and he was also teaching so while he was there something interesting started to develop do you remember Mary whom he, he forgave? The woman who was caught in adultery? That Mary? Yes. So she was there among them. And she knelt down and she had an ointment. A very expensive ointment that she bought. And she used that ointment to anoint the feet of Jesus or to wash his feet. And then she used her ear to dry his feet and the the reading said that it was such a high fragrance that it filled the entire house with the smell but then you had somebody who had to be the smart one judas he had a problem problem with what mary was doing and so he spoke up saying that what she was doing was wrong such an expensive ointment should have been sold and then the money should have been given to the poor but that wasn't really what he was looking at his intention was that he wanted the money for himself because all of a sudden he gave himself the title of treasurer so he was holding the money bag nobody gave him that title nobody gave him that position but jesus just just love him right and so he wanted the money for himself. So he had a problem that she took this expensive item and using it to wash Jesus' feet. How dare she? Huh? 
she's not being a good Christian. And what did Jesus say to him? Jesus said, look here, man, leave her alone because what she is doing, at least she is not waiting until I am dead to scatter roses. And that is something that we should pay attention to. We love to scatter roses after our loved ones and our friends are gone. When they can't enjoy the roses, they can't smell them, they can't appreciate them. That is why I have a big problem with how we do funeral in these days. Because it's a waste. Those kind of money you should be spending on the people when they're alive, when they can appreciate that money. But I tell you this, just like Judas, they are just putting on a show. So they are not necessarily in mourning. They are putting on a show to show everybody who can go the most expensive or who can do the most extravagant funeral. So it's, it, it, it's a show, a competition, right? But that's a, another story altogether. So here Jesus was saying that she's doing it while I'm alive. She's not waiting until I, I am dead to do it. So you need to leave her alone because I won't always be here. I won't always be with you, right? So he was speaking that he was going to die. And also that one day he was going to leave them. So that is something for us to learn. We need to do good to others while they are alive. Don't wait until they are dead because they can't appreciate it then. And Jesus went on to also say that the poor, the poor, Jesus went on to say that the poor we will always have among us. And that is true. When you look today, isn't that a fact? Yes, it is a fact. And so we must do what is right and not what make us feel good, if that makes any sense to you. But then, in addition to that, something interesting was taking place also. Another interesting thing was taking place. In verse 10 and 11, it says that the priests, they consulted, they, they were planning to kill Lazarus. Because remember, you know, many of the Jews that came there, they came because they heard that Lazarus was alive. And so they came to witness this miracle. So they wanted to see the miracle and see the man that wrought this miracle. And so the priests are the leaders of the time. They, they were not pleased with that. And so they wanted to kill Lazarus so that the people would, would not end up believing or following after Jesus. You see how the leaders were wicked? All because they don't want the attention to shift from them to Jesus. They want to be the focus of attention and keep the people in darkness. So Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, right? And he's working all these miracles. He's looking out for the poor. He's helping needy. He's ministering to the people, leading the people to light. Out of the darkness that, that the leaders had the people in. And this was what the leaders were planning. Instead of repenting of their wicked ways, they were trying to, to make matters worse for themselves by plotting to kill Lazarus again so that it will come off like it was a fake miracle and he was not raised from the dead but I tell you this whatever God do it cannot be undone by man so they could have planned some more they could not have killed Lazarus because God's name would not be tarnished there's a they, you see, what door, whatever door God opened, no man can shut it. God is in control. And nothing happened without God allowing it. And if he allow it, he has a plan. And so, what is the lesson that I want us to take from this reading this morning? The lesson that I want us to take, which is very clear, is that while it is still day and while 
Jesus is still available to us. We need to make him our best friend. Don't wait until he's taken away from us. And also in extension, while we have our loved ones, while we have our friends and they are alive, we need to do good to them. Give them the roses while they are alive. Because when they are dead, they can't appreciate them. And so it makes no sense at that point to be wasting money on the dead. For what reason? And so what Mary did, she did it because of what Jesus did for her. And that is what we need to understand. So it wasn't something on a whim that she came up with. Jesus was the only one who did not condemn her, who forgave her. Everybody else was ready to kill her. And so she understood what grace and forgiveness she received from God. And she wanted to, that was the best way she could find to express it, express her gratitude to God for what he did for her. And how many of us can say that? How many of us can say that? Are we grateful for what God did for us? Are we grateful for what God is doing for us now? Or do we have an ungrateful spirit? What is your answer? Think about it. Are you grateful for God's mercy? And trust me, God has bailed us out of some messy stuff. He has done so much for us. And it seems like it's a burden for us to show him gratitude. And that is why when we see others expressing their thanks and praise to God for what he has done for them, we need to leave them alone. As long as God accepts their praise and accepts their gratitude, and as long as it is sincere, we need to leave them alone because only they understand what God is doing for them and has done for them. So I pray that we will be more grateful to God. And I pray that we may show our appreciation to him by following him and by giving him our heart in totality, not just a piece. May God bless you and may God keep all of us as we continue to walk in his favor. Amen.